Welcome back to the Page Corn Blue Show. This episode is brought to you by Soco Social, the go-to social media agency for fashion, beauty, lifestyle, and wellness brands. On this day, we're going to talk football with Tom Herman, head coach at Florida Atlantic University. But we're not talking all the stats, the breakdowns, the predictions. You can find those in every other news article on ESPN and all those great places all season. Those change week to week. I want to introduce you to the coach, the team, the new era, new conference, and Coach Herman's concepts from the field to life. So even if you're not a huge football fan, this episode will speak to you. And I'm pretty sure we're going to make some owl fans out of all of you. Haggerty family head football coach Tom Herman is the eighth head coach in the FAU football program's history. It's his first season at the Reigns for the Owls, but he led the Longhorns at the University of Texas for four seasons and was also head coach at the University of Houston for two. He's also held coaching positions at Ohio State, Iowa State, Rice, Texas State, Sam Houston State, and Texas Lutheran. Herman amassed 32 wins at Texas, the third most by a head coach in his first four seasons at UT. And at UH, he was named a finalist for the Eddie Robinson and Bear Bryant Coach of the Year Awards and was chosen as the Football Writers Association of America's First Year Coach of the Year and the AAC's Co-Coach of the Year. Now, coaching at FAU and ready to go. Coach, welcome. Thank you, Paige. Appreciate you. So happy to have you, happy to have you in town. Uh, We're so excited um, as a community and as OWL fans, um, born and raised here myself, so a little, you know, true (laughs) true to to OWL country. Um, But I hear you're you're not just busy on the field. You've been going door to door in our community. They've really put you on uh, coach spirit too, right? Dropping off the FAU Paradise Pride program signs. No, yeah, well, for your your older listeners, I, I told them, I want to be like Ed McMahon when I grow up. And then, the, so they give me the, it's like the publisher's clearinghouse, Ed McMahon. And I said, no, I, I want to just sit on a couch every day next to Johnny Carson, Ed McMahon. That's the Ed McMahon I want to be. So, no, the, it was a, a, a way for us to pay back some uh, very loyal and, and generous, uh, not just with money, but with time, effort, energy, support, um, some fans and families that, that bleed you know, red and blue. And, and so uh, we still got a few left too, which uh, they're, they're always fun. So those are the, the signs, the flags, and really just spreading some spirit. Um, but those, those stadium stands will be rocking uh, come a couple days from now, September 2nd, right? Yep. And um, what's your message to the community here at the start of the season? Well, I, I think one is we need you. Uh, you know, everybody wants a winner, but is everybody willing to do what it takes to produce a winner? And, um, you know, that I always have heard and, and believed that, you know, people talk about, well, he's got the will to win. Everybody's got the will to win, right? If you raised, if, if you pulled 100 people walking down the street and said, would you rather win or lose? How many would raise their hand for lose? Like nobody, right? Everybody wants to win. They have the will to win. It's, it's about the will to do the things necessary to win. And well, how does that apply to the community? Well, it applies to the community because we're better. There's a reality called home field advantage. And we're better when we're supported by our community, when the, the, the stands are packed and loud and, and make it an intimidating environment for our opponent. Um, but also, I, I think it breathes life, you know, whether it's sold out every week, I. I is that the expectation? Not probably realistically. That, it, that would certainly be the hope. But I, I think more than that, I think you get the best version of our players when they know that they're being supported by the community. And it's not just fam- friends and families and, and students in the stands. That it's, it's, it's um, And then, you know, it's people in, in our own community. And I think the second thing is, you know, we – really, really believe in the pride uh, of the Tri-County area, that being Dade, Broward, and, and Palm Beach County. And we want the community here, not just in Boca, but in the, our surrounding areas too, all of South Florida. We, we are the hometown Division One college football team for all of South Florida. You, you've got a private school down in, in Miami that, you know, is – 
a little bit different and, and you, you've got a commuter school somewhere down there as well. And so we are really, you know, for South Florida, we are the, the, the true college environment, the two true collegial feel uh, of, of a campus environment. And so that would be my long winded message to the community is that a, we need you. Uh, and B, I think, you know, we're, we're going to prove to you that we're a worthy rallying cry to be, to be behind here as a member of the Tri-County area. You talked about winning. Everyone wants to win. You've also talked about creating the identity and uh, the culture and how that's such a huge part. Um, explain the importance of that, obviously, for you with, it, with your team. Yeah, I, I think, you know, the, the old adage is if you want to be successful at something, either do something completely different than that's being done currently or do what's being done currently different and better than everybody else. And so for, for us, we're, we, we, there's no secret plays in football. There's no newsflash. Hey, Paige, we're yeah. going to run inside zone. We're going to th- throw the ball. We're going to blitz every now and again. We're going to play f- quarters coverage. Like everybody knows what everybody does. There's no secret no, plays, this, no secret blitzes. Any, any of this? No, no. Yeah. It's about, do you have the players? Are you talented enough? Because it's always going to be a player's game. Uh, and then it's about culture. Because culture eats strategy for lunch. Because you, 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 can, you can have the greatest game plan and drop the cutest little plays. But if our guys are tougher, if our guys are more physical, if our guys are more detailed in their job, uh, and they do it with a greater sense of purpose, uh, that being the guy next to them rather than themselves, then you can have all the cute little plays you want. But we're going to win. You've got two dozen, nearly two dozen starters coming back. Um, are you, you Do feel we really? Yeah, right? Yeah, it feels like a lot. I mean, I round up. Okay. Yeah, but, there you go. Yeah, okay. Oh, well, what's the number? I don't know. I you don't probably, know. Okay. Yeah, I, don't I don't pay attention to any of that stuff, especially you, as a new guy. It's fine. I, as, as a new guy, I, okay. there were no starters. You know, when I got here in January, everybody had a clean slate. I love so, that. All yeah. right. So you've got a clean slate. But we, we've got a veteran outfit. Got it. Yes. Um, how do you feel going into the season? Great. I, I really do. I, I've, I've fallen in love with this team. They're, um, they love football. You know, they're my kind of guys. You, you, there, there's, there's not a whole lot of – now, there, there's a few that are um, have been hesitant maybe a little bit to trust and to buy in, and, and those are tougher but to reach. But for the most part, once you earn their trust and respect – you know, they'll do damn near anything for you and they're tough they just want to win and they love football and they've got a chip on their shoulder you know we're, we're not the university of florida we're not ohio state we're not michigan we're, we're you know we're not usc we get that and we got a bunch of three-star two-star no-star guy recruits that have been told their whole life they're a tenth of a second too slow two inches too short you know, 20 pounds too light, whatever the case may be. And they're out to prove everybody wrong. And come one, come all. If you got that kind of attitude, you're in the right place. And a new conference, right? So mm-hmm. you got uh, now uh, the AAC American Athletic Conference, um, the, what, 15 institutions, UNT, Rice, um, Navy, East Carolina. What does this mean for FAU football? Well, I, I think, one, it, it means a higher level of visibility um, with the, the current media deal that the American Conference has with, with what I call big boy ESPN, you know, not ESPN right. Plus or ESPN2, like, like the real ESPN, not the Ocho or whatever <laughs> right. they call it, right? Um, so I think it benefits our university and our program with the, the increased visibility. I think we saw, you know, how powerful – just positive visibility from an athletic department can be how powerful that can be to a university when our basketball team did what they did. And so um, that, that step up in conference will provide that step up in, in visibility, but, but also at the end of the day, it's going to provide more dollars, you know, when, when uh, we finally get to the point, you know, us early entries or, or however you want to, call the six from Conference USA that are now joining the American. Um, you know, we've had to b- pay a buyout to the American Conference, and we come in at a prorated uh, cut of the TV share. So 
our net TV deal this year is going to be zero. Um, so, but once we start actually seeing some of the benefits of that uh, enhanced TV contract, then we're able to put that money back into resources for our student athletes too, which is exciting. Mm -hmm. You have a talented team, the talented quarterbacks. Everyone lately has been talking about you know who's starting, but you have you have a core, right? So you've got uh, you've you've named your starter, but you have a, a whole crew behind him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure yeah. you're like, yeah, yeah, of really it. good players too. Of really yeah, good players. So a couple transfers and um, and off you go. Well, we we knew with the starter last year, I think the last two years in the cozy Perry leaving that there, there was a void there and uh, Tyreek Starks and Mike Johnson were already on the roster, but Mike Johnson had some significant surgery to his throwing shoulder and Tyreek had a bum knee. And so we, I mean, we, we had to go out and, and get, we got two transfers and, and we knew heading into January that we needed at least one to function uh, through spring practice, so we needed at least one in January, would have taken a second transfer quarterback at that time, had the right guy presented himself, but we decided to wait until the next opportunity to take transfers, which was in May, and that's when Casey um, expressed interest. And next thing you know, we, we've got a sixth-year senior, a fifth-year senior, uh, both former starters at the Division One level, uh, and Daniel Richardson being the fifth year senior. Um, and then, you know, you've got Mike Johnson, a transfer from uh, Penn State, you know, so, and then our two true freshmen, Carson Kruver um, and, and Luke, I mean, those, those guys have shown they've got the talent to be here too. So um, it's a very, very healthy room right now. Good. For sure. All right. Your resume is strong, uh, minus some time in Buckeye territory. <laughs> and that was the strongest. <laughs> hey, I know, I know. It's just hey, hard for me to say. The, the, I'm here's Michigan the cool part. Here. So I, I know, blue. and well, I, <laughs> a grad. I, I am a Ohioan by birth, too. I mean, I was born in Cincinnati, yep. and so uh, I've always been a Reds and Bengals fan. So by default, I think I was a bit of a Ohio State fan growing up. But um, I, I can separate it. And by the way, you and I were talking, or actually, when I said we aren't, University of Florida, we aren't this, we, we aren't Michigan. Uh, for me to say Michigan and not the team up north, yes, I think thank that's, you. A, that's right. a step in the right direction to it healing, is. right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think we could do a whole other podcast on the Michigan-Ohio State rivalry, maybe. Well, uh, and I, I had three opportunities, and I've got three pairs of gold pants, so. Yeah, I'm, I, 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 yeah I, 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 well, congrats. I made, we, we made the most of our opportunities when I was there, for sure. What a run. Yeah. What a yeah. run. And uh, awards for you during that time and some uh, amazing players that you coached um, with Barrett and, and whatnot. But um, you went on. I mean, you have a long list of, of universities that you've worked for. I mentioned a few of them. Um, you were at Te you started GA is at Texas, yeah, right? Yeah. And then well, my very first job was Texas, Texas Lutheran, Lutheran for five thousand dollars a year, and uh, I got two meal swipes a, a day at the cafeteria. So I took my two undergraduate degrees and packed up my Honda Civic in Los Angeles and hopped on I ten and told my mom I'm going to go take a Division three job for five thousand dollars a year. And she looked at me and, like I had horns coming out of my forehead, <laughs> you know, yeah. but. Well, it's so like did grad that then? School, yeah, right? then yeah. then graduate assistant at the University of Texas was okay. the year second and third year after I had graduated myself from college. By the way, in television, it's the same thing. Those early paychecks are, were are no, rough, and and, you know? and it's and it's, it's why yeah, it's why I did. I I honestly, Paige, I wasn't sure um, if this was really the right thing for me. I thought I was was wanted to get into media and did a lot of media stuff while in college, but I just, it wasn't close enough to the locker room. It wasn't close enough to the, the, the fellowship and the camaraderie. Um, you know, I'd been a captain. I'd had coaches say, you want to coach? And then, but then they described the lifestyle, especially early. And it's like, wait, what? You mean I, I went into all this debt in college and now I'm going to go into more debt <laughs> to, <laughs> to, 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 to live my dream. And so, um, yeah, I, I, as much as I love the game and have, have you know, made it my, my life, um, had things gone differently and, and not achieved certain milestones along the way, I, I, 
I don't know that, um, you know, I, I was going to live the pauper life uh, for the rest of my life either, uh, you know, and, and sacrifice for the game either. So I do liken it a lot to what, you know, on-air talent especially has to, to go through. Um, when it does come to the media, you got to take market number 232 and yeah. be a, a right. reporter and yeah. you're carrying your own camera and you're making just enough to – pay the rent and, yeah. and gas, right? Yep. And yep. just waiting for lucky. the break, right? Wait, <laughs> yeah. Doing move the best you can and then waiting waiting yeah. for the next call. Yeah, and you move up like you, you guys and you coaches do. Uh, and you did that. You did that through the years. Um, and then with a little bit of media in between, um, prior to this for CBS Sports and whatnot, right. what was it that you missed and what, um, you know, just drew you back in uh, when you had this opportunity to, to, to step into this role at FAU? Players. I miss the players badly, really, really badly. Um, It was, you know, when I was this past August of 22, that was the first time I had not been a part of a training camp in close to 40 years. Um, And so I felt a little like Brooks from Shawshank Redemption, like I don't even know how the real world works. Like, you know, what – I'm used to in the fall being gone, you know, 16 hours a day. And um, so that was a bit of a culture shock and just the routine of of what a a schedule uh, for a coach is. Um, But ultimately, it was the players. I just, you know, knowing the impact that coaches had on on my life growing up, um, you know, I made it my mission to do the same and – you know, press pause for a little bit for those couple of years, one with the, the Bears and in the NFL and then one doing television to say, okay, hey, is this really, 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 really what you want to do for the rest of your life? And obviously the answer is, is yes. yes. Right? Yeah, very much so. And why did FAU feel so right? Well, I knew getting back in, um, there would be opportunities, but I wanted to make sure that, you know, at this stage in my career and in my life, for, um, in all honesty, that, uh, that whatever job that I decided to take, that we decided to take, was had to check two boxes. Is my family going to be happy living there, and can you win championships? And that is a very rare combination, you know, to find in, in college football these days. Um, and this was the one of, of all of the opportunities that presented themselves. This was the one that obviously living in Boca um, and the lifestyle that that uh, brings with it is great for uh, my family, but also the ability to recruit your own backyard in the Tri-County area and get phenomenal, phenomenal players, you know, within an hour's drive um, and to be in the American Conference and to have a brand new facility. It's only two years old that a lot of Power Five schools, quote unquote, uh, would would love to have. And so just this one checked both boxes emphatically, and that made the the decision pretty easy. A lot of people don't leave here, you know. Just saying. It's getting more and more tempting every day. Yeah, yeah, we got you. You're here. Um, You know, days before Emmett Smith came to town for the YMCA uh, Inspiration Breakfast uh, earlier this year, and uh, FAU held the kickoff reception, the VIP reception, you spoke at that and uh, grabbed you for a quick interview afterwards. And you talked about to the the crowd there that night and to me, uh, your childhood, you just mentioned briefly, you were born in Cincinnati and uh, you were an only child uh, raised in California and you had a single mom, and you talked about the coaches and the impact they had. Um, can you explain that a little bit more? Uh, yeah, I mean, it was, you know, only child, single mom. My my real dad was, was kind of in and out of my life growing up and, and wound up passing away in a homeless shelter in Cincinnati when he was 52. Um, so, you know, my, my mom worked, and, you know, I, I don't ever claim that, that we were poor by any stretch, but she had to work work her tail off to make sure we weren't. Um, but when it came to raising an adolescent young man, you know, there were just things that she didn't know. 
and it was, hey, mom, I'm growing whiskers on my chin. Oh, go, go see coach. You know, I, I can teach you about legs and armpits, but <laughs> I don't know if there's anything different on the face, you know, right, so go right. see coach. You know, um, mom, I'm going to a banquet. This is before YouTube, obviously, or apps. Yeah. But, you know, I, I got I to gotta wear a tie. I don't know how to tie a tie. Go see coach. You know, and so it, it was – Coach has had a tremendous impact on me, you know, uh, as being kind of my very, very positive male role models, both in high school and college. And, um, you know, and then being an only child with no brothers and sisters, you know, I kind of really gravitated to the team. I mean, they were my brothers, you know, and, and there, there was never a time when I was with someone if that they weren't, you know, part of the team. You know, and, and those guys were my brothers. And so I think that's why, even though I, I had interest elsewhere in one, when I was in college, you know, coaching really never crossed my mind. But once I really got down to the nitty gritty of what do you really love about football, um, it was the people and the camaraderie and the fellowship. And you just, you can't find that at that level in, in any other area of sport even you know meet from media coverage to front office and in, in professional sports to whatever you, you're just never going to find that outside of the locker room and it's a it's a really cool thing and it's it's been very impactful in my life I know that yeah the best energy were there other sports for you growing up or always football all football? well I wasn't very good at any any sports <laughs> unfortunately I, I tell people you know I played division three non-scholarship I had to I was so bad at football I had to pay a university thirty thousand dollars a year to <laughs> just to let them <laughs> just for them to let <laughs> me play college up. football <laughs> yeah um no I I was I played basketball or baseball um growing up it was you know my mom kept me busy right. so growing up but middle school high school was was really the only other sport I played was was baseball a little bit but mostly just football I wasn't good enough to play any other <laughs> What, what is your message to single moms out there? Um, if you think, if you take us back, you know, um, that's got to be, yeah, I'm you sure must you resonate. Have a bun- you have a bunch listening right now. Yeah, that's um, right. Uh, I, I would say that <laughs> because as a, a parent of adolescents too, I, I know sometimes it's difficult for young people of that age to express their gratitude, but I, I, I just just want them to know that uh, no matter how distant your kid may seem at times, um, they know and they, they, they're grateful on the inside. I, I promise you. I promise you. Yeah. It'll come back around yeah. too, right? Yeah. The older they get, you know, they, they grow out of that. I promise you. <laughs> so coaching or fatherhood, which has been more challenging? <laughs> oh gosh. Oh, oh, easily fatherhood. Yeah. I mean, at least I, I, I knew a, a little bit about football and you kind of grow in the sport as you grow as a, as a human. Um, when you're a father, they, they just drop that thing. <laughs> they drop that thing on you on their birthday and say, here, figure it out. You know? And yeah. it's like, holy cow, this is, this is like, <laughs> we are responsible for the life of another human. So yeah, that, that was definitely more challenging, but, but has much like anything with practice gotten easier you know the more kids that we've had (laughs) yes it does and and you learn as you go that's what I always say new moms or dads you learn as you go and uh and we all learn together right we ask our friends we lean I always say lean on everybody else um how about your guys uh, on the field whether you're in the locker room um and it's something that happened on the field or if it's something in life because I'm sure you 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 hear it all How, how do you lift them up and get them, you know, the ups and downs. It's such a big part of, of being a coach. Well, it, it is. And, you know, and I, I say this with no gender bias, but there is no women's football. So when I say young men or men or boys, it's because that's what I coach. Gotcha. Um, yep. But I, I do think, you know, that we we catch these young men at, at a point in their lives where, you know, they they need – direction and they need guidance but but if and we've got to be there for them especially this generation this generation is quote in touch with their feelings more than 
any previous generation. And um, doesn't matter how you feel about it. What matters is it's a reality, so you better figure out how to manage it. And um, so I think we owe it to our players to teach them how to be tough. I, I, I think, you know, fortunately, our country specifically, but most of the world, um, you got to compete and be tough to get the things that, that you want in life. And the only way to do them is to fight, scratch, claw, and, and out work and out hustle people. And um, it's our job to make sure that they understand that and that it takes a lot of mental toughness and fortitude to be able to do that on a daily basis to achieve the things that, that you want to achieve in life. Um, but at the same time, also be sensitive to whatever they're going through, knowing that you know, this is, this is different, you know, and, and this is okay. And so I think you, the, the original part of the question was, how do you lift them up when they're going through stuff? I think listening is probably the best. I mean, I've, my, I've been told my shoulder is a really, really good one to cry on. Like, I don't know if it's got a special <laughs> shape to it or something, but you know, just, just let people talk and tell their problems to you. And, and, uh, I've also learned being, you know, married for 22 years, don't try to solve everybody's problems either. Um, but just let them know that you're there and, and if they need you, um, whatever they need, you'll, you'll provide. Um, but also remind them that, you know, we, we got a team counting on you to do your job too. And, um, so we, we got to learn at a very young age, um, some compartmentalization too. And which is one thing I'm really big on. Uh, and cause I've, I've, I've seen it so many times, you know, in this profession, you know, kid has a bad practice. Well, wh wh what's going on? Well, my girlfriend broke up with me last night and it's like, well, what the hell has that got to do with practice? Or, you know, I, I, uh, am zoned out in in a, a meeting, Hey, snap out of it. What's going on? Oh, coach. I just found out I failed my math test. Like, okay. Like move on or put like put it on the <laughs> shelf we need to be here present for these four hours and then we'll go deal with it, whatever else is going on with our life and so I think successful people and I know there's a wide uh, you know you, you, you could take five podcasts to talk about the definition of successful um, but if you want to achieve the things that you want to uh, internally achieve you've, you've got to have fortitude and you've got to be able to compartmentalize your life and not let the um, negative things that may be happening in one sector of your life bleed into, you know, the, the jobs that you have to do in other parts of your life. One thing you've told me before was a huge word was persevere, right? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and I loved how you said, you said, you know, everything, go one and oh for everything. Everything. Yeah, it's yeah. a constant competition every day. And I, 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 I'm so glad that our country is still that way, that you, you have to compete for the things that you want. And, um, you know, but it's, it's more than, than a mantra of, hey, want to know, we're going to take it one week at a time or whatever. And I, you know, we talk about if you really want to dive into it, you know, you compete against really three entities at, at any given time. One is the easiest to get motivated for, and that's what we call a direct opponent. You know, your coach says, line up and go beat this guy in a race or – you go block that guy or you go cover that guy. Like that's easy to get motivated for. Right. The other two are really hard. And one is what we call the little demon in your head. Right. We all got them. Even the strongest minded people I've ever known have that demon. And people often, <laughs> I often joke sometimes when people say, what do you do for a living? I, I, I don't say coach. I say, I fight human nature every day <laughs> because as humans we're conditioned to want what's easy, what's convenient, what's pain-free, um, what's quick. Uh, you know, we want all of those things. And, but we, what I know and what our coaches know is that in order to win championships in this great sport and in order to succeed in life, um, you've got to do exactly the opposite of that. And you've got to do things that are inconvenient and uncomfortable and sometimes painful. And certainly that it may take a long time for you to see results of, you know, and so that is what we do every day. And so we're fighting that little demon in your head that 
is human nature that tells you to take it easy. Hey, good enough is good enough. You're good, man. You slow down. This hurts. This is going to be inconvenient. And then lastly, really your own best self. And the, the way I best describe that is I've got three missions in life and that's to be the best husband, the best father and the best head football coach of Florida Atlantic university um, that I can be. And if I wake up one day, I live that day and I put my head down on the pillar and I'm not better in some form or fashion in, in all three of those areas, then why the hell did I wake up to just check boxes for 16 hours? Like that's no way to live, right? I want to improve every day. I want to be better than the guy I was yesterday in those three areas for sure. Because if, if not, then, then what are we doing? Why are we waking up? Why are we leaving the house? Why are we getting out of bed? What, what's the point? If you're just going to stay the same every day, then I don't know. Uh, you know, th these kids have been doing the same drills for since they were eight years old, some of them. And it's like, okay, you've done that drill 10,000 times. Go make the 10,000 and first, the best one you've ever done. And if you don't have that mindset every time, then why did you do the drill? Did you really get better or did you check a box? Box, I hate box checking. Like, don't, like busy work or whatever. Like, no, like. We're, we're, if we're working, we're working to get better, and we're going to do it full speed, and we're going to do it with our hair on fire with a tremendous amount of enthusiasm. We're not going to just tiptoe tip -toe through life. I don't know. I'll get off my soapbox now. That's okay. Thanks. I like the soapbox. That's a good box to, to <laughs> be on and listen to. And, I mean, how do you not get overwhelmed, though, as a head football coach at a major university, you know, in terms of um, – so many things to read, so many ways to get better. You know, I feel a lot of us sometimes feel that overwhelm. You know, what do you do to, to, to improve each day, uh, you, yourself? Yeah. While you're improving the lives of all of these other guys, how many guys on the field? Uh, 115 plus 50-ish employees. Yeah, so closely yeah. 200 people that I'm responsible for. Right. <laughs> it's a little yeah. – it, it, it's, it's like being a CEO because we've got yeah. all sorts of divisions that I'm responsible for too, in, including, you know, strength and conditioning and athletic training and nutrition and assistant coaches and operations and recruiting. And so there, there's all different arms too that ultimately the buck stops at my desk. And so um, I don't know, you said – uh, oh, The overwhelm. Do you like, get how do you, like where do yeah. you – and how do you um, – you know, with all the resources, I feel like, to get better. I mean, where, where do you – it's always busy for you, right? Yeah. Are you and a I, reader? I, do you no, uh, I, I, talk I, I, to – You know what I started who's... doing a few years ago? Um, just uh, talking to a psychologist, and, you know, it's difficult for me to shut my brain off when I get home mm -hmm. and, and to go to sleep and all that. And so um, – I, I read. And then they said, well, what are you reading? And I said, well, I, I read either like biographies of, you know, famous leaders, you know, I've read from Steve Jobs to Vince Lombardi to, you know, Barack Obama's biography, like you, you name it. You know, I like reading about successful uh, people and or, you know, a leadership book or a whatever book. And the psychologist said, well, you probably have your highlighter and your pencil out and all that, right? I said, yeah. He goes, you're not trying to fall asleep. You're trying to, you're working. <laughs> like, that's work. And so they suggested reading fiction. And I hadn't read fiction in probably 10 years. And so I read a lot more fiction now to relax. Um, to be honest with you, I try to take as little work home with me as I can uh, so that when I am home, I'm, I'm if they're awake when I get there, I'm, I'm present for my family. And, and if they're not awake, at least I can unwind a lot better. So I think those are the two big things is I, I, I take much less work home now than, than I used to because it doesn't matter if your body is there. If you're not there mentally or emotionally, it doesn't, it's the same as being gone. Um, and then I read more fiction, I think, is yeah. probably the other one. Great. I love it. No, that's so good. And, um, and talking to people through these things, right? I mean, all of us do. I mean, even FAU is bringing in some awesome wellness mind, oh, yeah. you know, all the mindful experts now, which is, which is great. And our little ones in schools are, are getting it yep. too. So it's the, the whole picture. Um, great time to take a quick pause, a quick 
time out here, Coach. Um, but when we come back, we're going to talk about NIL, um, Coach's strength and conditioning tips for all of us, and how all of you can connect with Coach Herman. We'll be right back. When it comes to social media and elevating your brand, you want a company that gets you, your business, and your product, like Soco Social. If you struggle with content creation, consistent posting, keeping up with the latest trends, and staying ahead of your competition, Soco Social's got your back. With over 15 years of combined experience, Soco Social knows a thing or two when it comes to creating killer content that converts your followers into customers. No more wasting your time trying to figure out what to post. Soco Social brings consistency to your brand's online presence. Ready to see your brand grow? Well, you can visit their website at socosocial.com. That's S-O-K-O-E social. Com, the go-to social media agency for fashion, beauty, lifestyle, and wellness brands. Welcome back. Haggerty family head football coach at FAU, Tom Herman, on the show. Thanks so much for being here, coach. You know, uh, how are you at halftime? Are you energetic? Are you calm? Is it a little of both? It depends on, obviously, the first half. I, I would say one of the things I, I, I do pride myself on is my even keeledness, if that's a word, on, on game day. Um, you know, if, if we're asking our players to become non-emotional about things that happen on the field and to go, go to the next one, go to the next one, go to the next one, go want to know the next one, go want to know the next one, then how, I would be a hypocrite if I was arguing with the officials after every call or if I was – throwing my headset after a bad play or a sack or whatever, if I lost my you-know-what at halftime. So I try to stay as even-keeled as I can, but um, sometimes it is – sometimes they need a pat on the bat and back and sometimes they need a kick in the butt. Yeah. And you got to just kind of know when they need the pat on the back and know when they need the kick in the butt, and sometimes they do need a kick in the butt. And – um but it's, I guess, the shortest way to answer that is case-by-case case basis. How's yeah, that? Got it. Got it. <laughs> um, and talk about uh, all the teams. There's such a great rise in FAU athletics right now, um, from beach volleyball Hell yeah. to basketball Hell yeah. um, and, and all of the teams. So I don't want to leave anybody out, but those were some of our highlights last year. And I think Coach Dusty May, he, he has those same, some of those values, you know, that act like the champion before you're the champion. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, that's kind of some of the stuff he talked about. And um, were you at March Madness? Were you in Houston for the game? I, I was in Houston and was in New York City for the nice. the the one to get them to the, to the Final Four. I wasn't there for the first one, the Sweet 16, but the Elite Eight game, I was there and I, I remember vividly um, being at that Elite Eight game, and I was sitting right behind Dusty, and I'd never, as for as long as I've coached, I, and as many college basketball games as I've been to, I've never sat that closely behind our bench. And so there was a timeout. It was late in the game. It was a close game. I think it was Kansas State that we beat, and it was a close one. Um, and he's drawn up an out-of-bounds play, and I, I don't think it even crossed his mind to be doing it on purpose. And he starts drawing up a play, and he's talking to his guys, and his guys are all huddled around him. And he says, he's like halfway through drawing it, he races, he's, no, 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 you know what, let's save that for next week. And then he starts drawing up another one. And it was just so matter of fact, like, guys, we're going to win this game. We're going to win this and go to the Final Four. And I'm going to save this out-of-bounds play for when we play in the Final Four. But it was probably, just in the heat of the moment, it, it, it just struck me of his confidence. And you could see it exuded uh, through and into his players. And, you know, they, they had the second shortest roster in Division I basketball. And that includes our seven foot one center too yeah. so he skews the average a little bit so you you don't go in and do the things that they did and win 35 games in a year and win conference championships and go to the final four and be a heartbeat away from the champion national championship game with players like that if you don't have a superior culture and he does those people he beat would not trade rosters with him they wouldn't most of them and yet with a roster that on paper may not look as good as the roster 
that they're playing against, they found a way to win damn near every time. And it was, it was really fun to watch. And I think to your point about the excitement on campus, I, I think obviously they, they set the bar very high for us and, and beach volleyball as well, uh, which is good. We, we, we like a, a good challenge. But, but also I think more importantly, it, it opened a lot of administrators' eyes as to just really how powerful an elite athletic program can be for the entire university and community. I mean, you're talking about close to a billion dollars worth of impressions. You as a marketing person would know how important that is. A billion dollars they gave Florida Atlantic. And our, our admissions our admissions, our admissions are up. Uh, you like Thank that? You. Yeah, former, yeah, former tech TV guy. guy. Yep. Um, <laughs> you know, our, our applications are skyrocketed. Uh, every metric of, of student well-being on campus is through the roof. And, and so that, I think, was probably the most powerful thing and, and maybe the most impactful thing. And I, I know I'm prone to hyperbole, but we're a very young university and an even younger athletic department. And in my opinion, what that basketball team, what our basketball team did was the most impactful thing for this university that's ever happened since its inception. And you can call that hyperbole if you want, but I know this six months ago, nobody in California knew where Florida Atlantic was. They do now. Mm, They sure do. You know, um, strength and conditioning. What would your advice be, you know, um, for those who are trying to get back at it, you know, from a football coach, um, some of the things you teach your guys. I am human, too. Come on. Like, I'm a 48-year-old man, too, so <laughs> okay. I, I, have, I have some okay. of the same struggles. So. All right. <laughs> and one of the lines, you, you know, you guys talk about is, like, if you want to uh, play, play football, work on football. If you want to be fit, work on fitness. But sometimes it's easier said than done. Yeah, I, I you know, it's hard. I, I mean, it, it took me a month to get – back into a, a, a decent routine. Uh, I think routine is so important. Um, it's got to be the same time every day, the same day, every week, the same week, every month, whatever the case may be, in my opinion, because there just becomes too many excuses if you leave it unappointed, if you will. If you write it in pencil every day, then you're going to erase it. And so you better write that thing in pen and you stick to it, and it's going to suck at first. Uh, I will tell you, if you're just a weekend warrior, if you're only working out once or twice a day, don't go to zero ever, because I went to zero for a while, and trying to get back in was was awful, awful. Um, so I think just that, find yourself a partner. I, I've got a funny story about Peloton. I, I, I don't do cardio. I hate cardio. I've had 16 knee surgeries, so I don't run unless I'm chased. And so, but when I was at the Bears, they had a Peloton, up on the cardio deck and I was like dude you, you got to lose some weight and so I went all in I bought the clip-on shoes the whole nine and I got on there and I did the beginner class it was like 25 minutes and by 21 minutes this is a true story and this is the power of coaching um at 21 minutes I was blown out I mean absolutely blown out I don't do cardio hated it and I had talked my, that little demon in our head that I just talked about earlier. He had talked me into saying, you know what, Tom, you're good. You're, it's your first time. You made it 21 minutes. You consider it a victory, you know, hop off. And then next time you do it, you'll get your 25. And right as I was about to press end, the, the coach on the screen who's recorded, it's not live. It's, they don't know who I am says, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking you want to quit. You're thinking you want to give up. You got four more minutes. You got it in you. And I was like, well, I guess I got to go the last four minutes. So, um, you know, I really liked that story of of coaching because even, like I said, the toughest of minded people need to be coached. And um, I forget what got us started. Oh, about the fitness. So just getting – but get yourself a coach too, even if it's a friend, you don't have to pay for it. Just somebody that can motivate you uh, until it becomes a habit. Quick thoughts on NIL. I mean, that's a whole nother um, category. You guys are now um, a whole nother department, right? Added to the job <laughs> description for you and your players. Um, but uh, Cliff Notes version on your thoughts on it. Um, yeah, I think, 
at its core, it's, it's long overdue. Um, it should have never been not a thing. I think by being a human being on this planet, you have you should be afforded the, the opportunity to monetize your name, image, or likeness. That is you. Um, should, though, the market uh, deem you monet- monetizable. And for a lot of players, that was the case. I mean, I was on this bandwagon 10 years ago for our quarterback at Ohio State who, when you went to the NCAA.org website, supposed to be nonprofit, and they own all of our guys' name, image, and likeness, and they're putting Braxton Miller Ohio State jersey on there, and this kid's not seeing a cent from it. That that bothered me. And so I think at its core, it's what should and 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 be afforded to these young men, but now what it's turned into with these collectives paying a kid, you know, a couple hundred thousand dollars to go show up at the YMCA for two hours, like that was not the intention. And but you knew once the genie got let out of the bottle, there, there's no way to keep recruiting out of it. And so we've got to find a way to raise a ton of money because we've got really good players. And there's other schools out there that every time that transfer portal opens twice a year, they're looking at our roster and seeing, well, can we pay this guy X number of dollars to, to get him to come to our place? And we've got to be able to, if not match that, at least make our guys feel appreciated more work to be done for the yes. rest of us and supporting that and, and helping you, you guys yes. help them. Um, we know you can sing and rap. We saw uh, some video uh-huh. um, <laughs> inside the Owlsboro show. They had you uh, doing that. But in, besides that, in your free time, what are some of the things you're reading? Um, not that you have much free time. No, I, I, it's uh, a lot of it's consumed with the kids. I, I just think, you know, we work so much in this job. I, I think I counted, you know, one year. Uh, of the 52 Saturdays a year, uh, you know, a year, I think I had like six of them off and, you know, like 11 Sundays, you know, yeah. and so it doesn't leave a whole lot of room for hobbies because, you know, if, if I do get that rare half day or day off, you know, my, to tell my family that I'm going to go fishing with the buddies or go golfing with the buddies, I, I, I just, I, A, I don't want to. <laughs> yep. I'd rather be with my, my kids and go watch them do something or, or be with them. Um, so maybe when they're out of the house, I'll pick up, you know, needle craft or something like that. But <laughs> until now, I, I don't have I'll a whole lot. Of, I don't I don't really have a hobby. Yeah. Family time. And, and uh, what do you love about Book Raton? So far? Oh, I I love the fact that it's. Having not been here at yeah. all before I said yes to the job, um, I, I thought, you know, once you get past. Fort Lauderdale, it was just nothing but sleepy beach towns. And this is not a sleepy beach town. This is a, a, a real city, a community, but not too big to where you, you feel um, overwhelmed. Uh, but And then, obviously, to be the location at the beach and the intercoastal. and the, the, I mean, it's just, it's, it, it truly is paradise. I mean, you forget, or at least I didn't even know, and I often forget, like, I could get on my wave runner right now and be in the Bahamas in three hours, <laughs> you know, like we live in the Caribbean and you know, that's, that's pretty cool. Like I'm staring out your window right now and I can't even count all the palm trees I'm looking at. Yeah. Yeah. You're in a good place and we're so happy to have you here. You're not on social media. Your, te- <laughs> your team is and maybe one day. Um, but so we'll just find you through FAUsports.com. Probably the best. Yeah. Or if you, you want, um, I'm sure if you, DM'd our, our football Twitter or Instagram account. I'm sure they'd get the message to me somehow. They would, and your team is on it. And uh, a home opener, September 2nd, 6 p.m. You got it. And Be there or be square. <laughs> That's right. Be there or be square. Go support the Owls, FAUsports.com. I'll put all those links on my website as well. That's pagecornblue.com. I always say page with an I and cornblue with a K. Um, winning in paradise and on the Page Corn Blue Show. Coach, Pretty good deal. Thank you so much for your time today. Thanks, Paige. Appreciate you. All right. Until next time, everybody, cheers and go Owls. Go Owls.